Good afternoon and thank you for joining this webinar. We will talk about how to optimize human resource management and efficiency with ACRO today. My name is Grace with Queen Renton Redwood and I'll be host during these sessions. If you have any questions, please use the Q&A box on the right side of your screen. We will try to answer them at the end of these sessions. This webinar will be around 30 minutes and we will have around 5 minutes for Q&A sessions. And we will record this webinar and make it available to you later on. Without any further delay, I would like to introduce you our presenter today, Olivier. Thanks, Grace. Okay, so good morning, good afternoon, good evening to uh, to all of you wherever you are. So um, here you can see. All right, that's me. Uh, I'm my name's Olivier. I'm the associate director of consulting uh, with Quinn Wellington Redwood. Right, before I go into ACRO and what it's all about, let me give you a quick intro to Quint. So we are called Quinn Wellington Redwood. We are an independent uh, management consulting firm based out of Netherlands. Um, we have roughly about 250 consultants worldwide and our core business is really on uh, lean IT, service management, sourcing, architecture and governance. Um, interestingly enough, we're also listed as the top global advisor on sourcing and governance. Right, a bit about what we do. Um, we do um, help cu customers come up with the um, um, digital transformation, uh, coming up with a roadmap uh, to improve their um, digital um, strategy. We uh, provide sourcing advisory services. We also uh, help customers design, implement and maintain um, their IT service management um, com competencies. We help them set up the organization structure. We help them come up with the uh, processes and so on. And uh, also, if you look at the bottom uh, right of the screen, you can see we have also the academy uh, portion, which is pretty much um, looking at enabling professionals uh, predominantly on IT services uh, and IT um, best practices. Okay, so some objectives of the webinar. I'm going to cover what are typical resource challenges and I'm sure most of you can relate to a lot of them. Um, what is ACRO? Why ACRO? A little bit about what the course is about and what benefits you can uh, gain from attending the course. <clears throat> I think each of us can relate to many of the uh, common challenges uh, below um, that happen in our everyday lives, you know, things like constant uh, disruptions via emails, uh, calls, meetings. Uh, we also suffer from unclear requirements, uh, changing priorities. Uh, it could uh, introduce a little bit of a reactive or ad hoc situation within our organization. And of course, we always have insufficient resources. Right, that's a very common challenge. Now, each of them may seem small and insignificant by themselves, but put together, these challenges cause significant disruptions to our jobs because it causes rework, um, introduces errors to our working environment, distracts us from doing the important stuff, and reduces the overall resource efficiencies within our organization. All right, <clears throat> so to reiterate, here are some interesting statistics. Well, did you know that office workers, we typically receive about 37 business emails. I think a lot of you receive more than that, actually. And every third email has an attachment and is often left unread. So an ACRO did a study, and it was interesting that they pointed out we actually encounter, on average, about 27 unplanned disruptions a day. And after every disruption, it takes us around 15 to 20 minutes for us to get back to the same working level of concentration as before. So if you take a simple calculation of 27 unplanned disruptions, multiply that by 15 minutes, we are really talking about close to seven hours of, um, of uh, time which needs to be taken for us to actually get back to the same level of concentration uh, as before we got interrupted. That's seven hours a day. Okay, so then we come to what is ACRO all about? So what does ACRO mean? ACRO means 
active qualified human resource organization okay um, and what I'm going to talk through the rest of the uh, webinar here is um, what is ACRO, how it will benefit you as an individual and your organization, and share a bit about what the ACRO course uh, is all about. So it is, ACRO is really a role-based uh, structured approach to implementing efficient HR management throughout the different organizational layers. Uh, when when I say organizational layers, I'm referring to the layers that um, ACRO has defined, which is at the individual layer, the department layer, and the entire organization. Um, so the beauty about ACRO, and you can see at the bottom part of the slide here, is that it can be implemented in large, small, or medium-sized enterprises. And it does not have to be of a particular industry. It can actually come from oil and gas, from finance, from telco, from government sector, and it basically can be implemented within um, enterprises with seven or more employees. This has been proven in some of the previous um, implementation case studies that have been done. And uh, why is ACRO important? ACRO is important because to date, as yet, there is no practical concept <clears throat> that exists which helps to uh, put the, the, the required level of focus on creating a stress-free and efficient human resource uh, management environment for the organization. Okay, having gone through what is ACRO, let's talk about why is ACRO important? How can it help us? So to re reiterate, ACRO is actually a uh, structured, flexible, um, easy um, approach, I would say, which aims to introduce greater transparency in terms of how we manage our resources. Resources here meaning our human resources. So again, um, this slide talks about how ACRO can help us across the multiple um, uh, organizational layers, starting with the company or the senior management right at the top. Um, it introduces efficiency. Um, ACRO has been proven to save up to one and a half hours per day per worker. So imagine if you multiply that per year per worker, across all the employees in your organization, the results are actually quite phenomenal. Um, for the managers and the team leaders, it's provide them with facts, right? Transparency, um, knowledge, so that they can make wise, educated decisions um, about things like who's overworked, who's underutilized, um, why are they underutilized, uh, what kind of skills are required, how do I... Uh, uh, effectively or efficiently allocate resources with the right skills to the right requirements. So something about something around resource allocation, resource matching. And of course, at the individual layer, we have at the worker layer, it really means a stress-free environment where uh, there is limited or even uh, better, no distractions. Um, and this will reduce the overall stress and um, introduces transparency in terms of roles, responsibilities, um, and uh, workers are then, um, they, they, they know what is expected of them, what are the handoffs, uh, what are the inputs, and what are the outcomes that are expected of them. One of the modules in ACRO um, covers the four basic color types. This is something I personally find quite fun and interesting. Um, as you know, some of you may have even done it before, there are many col color personality tests out there. Right? This is just one of them, and this is what one of the ways uh, the, that ACRO uh, uh, prescribes. It's a quick way to establish what personality type you are and what personality types your colleagues are. So if you look at um, the, the color chart here, it's basically just four colors, four uh, predominant colors, red, yellow, green, and blue. So each of them denote a certain characteristic. So red is more dominant. Uh, you know, the reds tend to have very clear goals. They're very authoritative. Um, they like confrontations. They don't shy away from that. Um, and they, have, they like to solve problems, right? Yellow, on the other hand, is a very people person. Uh, very proactive, very enthusiastic, could sometimes come across as a little bit impulsive, right? Uh, green, on the other hand, is the stable one, consistent one. Um, green tends to be reliable, risk averse, um, usually quite supportive uh, to the team. So <clears throat> someone who acts as the glue uh, to the team. 
uh, structured, uh, can be very results oriented as well. Uh, blue is conscientious. Uh, blue tends to like a lot of details. Uh, they like to do a lot of analysis. Um, they like uh, proof of evidence. Sometimes they can come across as aloof or restrained or even distant. Right. <clears throat> So everyone will typically have a mixture of colors. Usually there'll be one or two dominant colors that determine the basic characteristic of a person. The ACRO course will help you determine your color and how to work with personalities of different colors. How we do that is through um, exercises, uh, breakout self-analysis, self-assessment. And uh, we also do uh, a simulation where we put people with different colors uh, to work together in a team. And we also put people with similar color types working together in a team to see what the differences are in terms of the, um, the communication and, and the overall results. So basically, by understanding your colors, you can then work together in a more effective, uh, effective and efficient way uh, rather than uh, in uh, antagonistic way. So by understanding color types, you will be able to um, number one, understand your own behavior and the behavior of others. You're better able to understand your own strengths, your weaknesses, right? Um, better able to appraise other people's behavior. So you know how your fellow colleagues will behave in a certain situation. So you're prepared to either mitigate or either uh, minimize the repercussions of it. Um, you will also be able to put together teams that work well together um, so that projects or activities or efforts can be implemented in a much more efficient or an effective manner. So, for example, um, if you are a red person, a dominant person, um, then you tend to be very authoritative, right? Sometimes you could potentially bulldoze your way through to get your opinion uh, uh, across. Um, you can leverage then the strengths of green Right, someone who's calm, someone who's reliable, uh, someone who's a little bit more of like a, maybe your um, someone you can actually spar with, um, so that you can get the best combination possible. Right, so Acro will will um, as as part of. Uh, Implementing ACRO or even learning about ACRO, uh, this is where we throw the different color types together and see how uh, the dynamics of the people are uh, in terms of working in a team. Okay, so now I'm going to share some of the typical situations um, how ACRO can help and I'm going to share with you three uh, specific um, situations. The first one is the lack of prioritization and transparency of work efforts. So team members typically have many different roles. They have multiple demands. Uh, sometimes you're working on something and then you're asked to drop everything because something else has come along and that's more important, right? Um, and then you have to drop everything uh, and uh, get up to speed on the new activity and while you're doing that, something else comes along as well. So you see, it's kind of like a cyclical effect here. <clears throat> and the other thing about it is that sometimes we work, we tend to work in silos as well. We're so uh, into what we do that we may not know how our work efforts uh, are impacting other teams. We don't know what other team members are working on, um, and therefore we don't see the bigger picture. All right, and this then results in an environment that is uh, stressful, uh, very reactive, very ad hoc, right? And of course, team productivity drops because uh, we are coming up with distractions, right? We are changing our course uh, along the way, right? Um, sometimes we are changing the, the vision or the strategy, right? So this then becomes an environment that will be quite de demoralizing, demotivating, um, uh, sub-optimum productivity levels will be achieved. So um, ACRO here helps to prioritize efforts so that optimum levels of efficiencies and effectiveness uh, can be achieved. So there is a, a topic within ACRO that talks about how we can do skills matching, how we can look at who are the available resources, um, how long are they available for, and we can actually do resource allocation and match them according to the requirements of the business. Okay, 
So that's one. Um, the second one here is um, a situation where we have multiple responsibilities and I think this is something that is uh, quite common among, among us as uh, individuals. Uh, we could be part of the line organization or the process organization uh, as well as the project organization. So most of us um, we play multiple roles when we are in an organization. So we have our BAU, business as usual, right? We have our administrative stuff we need to do, um, maybe our management stuff that we need to do. Uh, maybe we also need to work on projects, right? So with all these multiple hats that we have to wear, right? ACRO actually introduces clarity clarity in terms of what are the roles and the responsibilities um, that are needed, right? So that decision making, um, escalation, um, execution of work is clearly understood and carried out. So things like uh, job descriptions, things like uh, clear handoffs from one role to another, they are all clearly stipulated. So we don't have to you know, um, get confused as to what this this role means and if we jump to another role, what then is uh, the expectations of that role. So it's clarity of roles which then gives a greater transparency in terms of the effort that we spend. Okay, and finally, the third and the last uh, situation I'm going to share with you here is that ACRO actually supports and enhances existing best practices or methodologies. Um, here you see a list of methodologies I've listed out, things like ITIL, uh, COBIT, COBIT is around governance, right? PRINCE2 is about project management, management of risk, and, and many others. This is not a, an exhaustive list. So a lot of students have come up to me before and asked, oh, so, you know, we have uh, actually implemented ITIL. And now we're, if, we look, if we look at ACRO, what does it mean? Does it mean we have to throw away uh, ITIL and re-implement and follow ACRO? Um, or we have always been following PRINCE2. What does that mean now? Do we uh, have to revamp our project management methodologies and implement ACRO in its place? The answer is no. Because if you look at it, ACRO is based on um, introducing resource efficiencies, right, in terms of human resource. And human resource is a common element that you see in any organization, whether you are an IT organization or a non-IT organization, whether you are a customer-facing organization or whether you are an outsource organization, it does not really matter, right? Um, so what ACRO does is that it enhances or it complements um, other best practice frameworks out there. Because ACRO at the end of the day is about people. Right? And, and we cannot escape from the fact that people is a common element across anything that we do, right? whatever decisions that we make. So anything we do typically involves people. So ACRO can be considered the underlying best practice framework um, that supports all other frameworks. So you don't have to come to a point where you have to choose it's either ACRO or ITIL. Right? It, if you think about it, it's ITIL and ACRO complemented uh, with each other. Okay, so that's a little bit about the overview of what ACRO is about and why ACRO and so on. I'm going to now talk about the course itself, the ACRO course. Uh, and in this section, I'm going to share what are the target participants, what the course structure typically looks like, and what are the benefits to participants of the course. So what participants can take away from the course. Okay, in terms of target participants, it's really very broad in terms of coverage. It's suitable for anyone, anyone who requires working knowledge of key concepts of ACRO, um, anyone who wants to improve the way of working among their team members, um, anyone who's looking at improving resource management processes. Um, it could be also targeted to people who are um, um, individual contributors or team leads, uh, project managers, uh, anyone who's uh, looking at role descriptions and looking at assigning roles to individuals, uh, even HR personnel uh, would benefit from this course. So anyone who wants to know um, that how to be um, more transparent about the roles, how to define roles and responsibilities clearly and so on. So if you look at the bottom square in that green square, 
um, the typical roles, people who would be interested or who would greatly benefit from the course would be department heads, resource managers, project managers, change managers, basically anyone. Now in terms of the course, um, the course itself is a foundation in ACRO. It's a three-day class um, and typically the exam is on the third day, the second half of the third day. Um, it's an instructor-led course. It's actually quite heavy in terms of breakout sessions, um, exercises, uh, simulations and all that. So it's actually quite a fun class where people actually get up and walk about and they get busy uh, working with other teams. Um, the exam structure is 50 questions, multiple choice, uh, A, B, C, D, right? Uh, passing mark is 50%, so you need to get 25 correct out of 50. Uh, 40 minutes in duration, uh, it's a closed book exam. Uh, currently, the exam is available only in English. Um, in terms of prerequisites, the beautiful part of it is that there are none. So um, anyone can take this, this course. Um, however, uh, basic knowledge of some HR practices, if you, you know some process framework such as ITIL, uh, COBIT or anything like that, that would be helpful. Even things like project management or resource management uh, practices would be helpful, but it's not a prerequisite. <clears throat> As a result of um, completing the course and passing the exam, you would then get a certificate. Uh, this is a certificate issued by APMG. Um, you will get the ACRO Foundation uh, Certificate uh, by APMG. Okay, and how will it benefit participants of the course? So over here, there are quite a number of uh, benefits. I'm going to just share a couple with you. Uh, after learning about ACRO and more importantly, applying those principles of ACRO within your organization, you can start to see um, that your staff becomes uh, more and more stress-free. Uh, it, it creates a, an environment where growth um, is encouraged. Uh, therefore, it increases the quality of work performance because motivation levels go up, clarity of roles go up. All right, it's clear what is expected of people, they are not stressed, they are not constantly disrupted and overall it creates a positive cyclical effect where um, your staff will, will experience increased motivation over time. So a whole bunch of benefits there uh, in terms of um, improving um, the behavior, the motivation and the overall productivity levels of your resources. All right, before I end the webinar, um, I would like to leave you with some food for thought. So there's a saying here, it says, working hard for something we don't care about is called stress. Working hard for something we love is called passion. And that's very true because if you think about it, we spend about 30% of our lives working. And since work makes up such a huge uh, portion of our lives, so much of our lives, we should actually enjoy it, right? Um, it is therefore the vision for ACRO to remove the causes of stress so that your working environment motivates the right kind of behavior and results in the right types of outcomes for your organization. <clears throat> so this pretty much ends uh, the content part of my webinar. Let me see if there are any questions uh, posted. Okay. All right. So yes, looks like we have a few. Uh, okay, uh, here it says, sorry if I've missed any detail, but I need the price of the ACRO certification. Uh, that's not a problem. We will get back to you on that uh, shortly because we have your details and so on. So we'll get back to you on that. Um, the next question is, what is the full form of ACRO? So I take it that you want to know the full naming, uh, the, the, the full name of ACRO. It actually stands for Active Qualified human resource organization. Yep. Okay, what else? We have, okay, another question here is, is the exam mostly related to ITIL? Okay, that's an interesting one. Um, actually, no, um, the exam is actually about ACRO. You don't need to know ITIL uh, in order to understand ACRO. Um, the interesting thing about uh, ACRO is, um, the founder of ACRO actually created 
ACRO because she felt that there was a need um, to sustain certain projects uh, and, and this started with her implementing ITIL projects and she felt that okay ITIL actually pretty much takes care of the process and typically we have technology to enable um, some of these processes and she felt that over time um, the level of success in terms of maintaining and sustaining uh, ITIL actually fell, dropped over time because the people, the motivation part, the change management part was not taken care of uh, or not given enough uh, focus. So that's why she came up with ACRO. So um, to answer your question, the exam is not mostly related to ITIL, but it would help if you know a little bit of ITIL or COVID or you know any of the best practices. Yeah, I hope that answers your question. Okay, we have a couple more questions here. What are key success measurements of ACRO, um, i.e. how do we know that we are successful? Okay, uh, to answer that, uh, yeah, here are some, maybe you can think about measuring percentage increase in worker efficiency per day, right? Uh, so if ACRO is, is implemented correctly, you will probably have improved utilization of resources. Um, maybe even from a project perspective, you could have um, improvements in the number of projects uh, delivered uh, in time, in quality, and on budget. Maybe you can also think about um, improving the accuracy in resource planning so you don't have last minute shifts of resources, right? Um, plan uh, who's got downtime, who's got, you know, uh, leave that's booked in advance so that you can map the availability with the requirements of the business and the skills as well. Um, other things maybe that you can think about is improving the um, uh, uh, improving the overall resource utilization. So you don't have too many people on the bench who are idle, but uh, say whenever someone's idle, you can think about improving his or her productivity by making by sending her for you know training uh, on skills that are uh, more relevant within your organization. Okay, we have a few more questions here. How does ACRO work with existing best practices? Uh, I think I mentioned that as well um, <clears throat> uh, on one of the slides. ACRO does not uh, discount any of the other existing practices that you already have in your organization. ACRO will complement or enhance those best practices. So let's say you've got ITIL. ITIL is a process framework, you know, incident, change, problem, and so on. It doesn't mean that you've got to throw away incident, change, and problem. It just means that you would have clarity, better clarity in terms of the roles, uh, the, the, the handoffs uh, between incident to problem, problem to change, and so on, right? Uh, okay, is the ACRO exam theoretical or scenario based? Okay, um, the ACRO exam is uh, again multiple choice. Um, typically, it is theoretical in the sense that you don't have a case study um, to answer to. Uh, so it's, it's really a short question and then multiple choice. So it's, it's quite a, a straightforward uh, exam format. Uh, sometimes though, they may, may give you a, a bit of a background story, but it will not be more than two or three sentences, just to give you the, the context of the question. Um, so yeah, largely it will be theoretical uh, based, right? So I hope that answers your question. Right, looks like we don't have any other questions. If that's the case, I will pass it back to Grace. Uh, before I do that, I'd like to thank you all for attending the webinar. I hope it has been uh, helpful and useful to you. Um, thank you all. Thank you, Olivia, for bringing us this webinar. I think it's time for us to end this webinar. I would like to thank everybody for joining us today. I hope everybody find this webinar educational and informative. For more information, you can check out our website at queengroup.com to get access to our white paper, article, or more information about our training course. Thanks again for joining us today. Have a nice day.